Hi everyone, welcome to week three of Narcissism Week here for Mental Health Mondays with Detroit Moms and Carrie at Reset Brennan Body. So today we are talking about uh, another layer of narcissism and it's how to not be a narcissist. And so I want you to first um, maybe cultivate a sense of self-compassion or self-awareness for the narcissist in your life, whether it is yourself or a loved one or even someone that you know a little about. Um, so, okay, first of all, let's back up. What causes narcissism? We've kind of talked about this a little bit in the last two weeks, but really the fundamental thing that causes narcissism is a fragile self-esteem. Now, the reason for this fragility is usually a result of childhood trauma, shame stories, beliefs about yourself, belief about the world. And because of these really detrimental circumstances, uh, perhaps a lack of attention growing up because a parent had a substance abuse issue or a parent had a mental illness of their own, uh, perhaps there was divorce or anything else really destructive in the family that wasn't a healthy divorce and turned into uh, your needs being denied and therefore feeling unlovable, um, unwanted, fear of abandonment, having a lot of anxiety over whether you'll ever be accepted. So this negative self-esteem is really the root and really the, the first consequence of whatever trauma, either a big traumatic event or a lot of small traumas, a lot of microaggressions over uh, the extent of the early childhood. And then that behavior turns into then this super confidence because it's really hard to overcome the negative self-esteem in a productive, supportive way because those support systems aren't there. And perhaps any a way of trying to ask for help was denied and so what allowed someone then to get attention even if it was negative attention was just attention seeking behavior and that became validated and that became confirmed through the brain of oh okay when we are overconfident and we are getting a lot of attention and being the center of attention this is what allows us to feel loved supported accepted and validated and so that negative self-esteem turns into this inflated self-importance that again is built on a bedrock of insecurity, but it ends up being displayed as this um, attention-seeking behavior. Okay, so that's usually how narcissism grows. And again, it just compounds and builds on top of each other. Um, so then you really have more of this personality trait or a lot of narcissistic traits. So this lack of awareness then over how the behavior negatively impacts other people is what creates the negative consequences. And usually the lack of awareness is a defense mechanism. It's a survival mechanism. It's there so that they don't have to, or you don't have to stare at the really hurtful parts of your life, to stare at the trauma, to sit in the trauma and actually make peace with it or heal from it. Rather, it is easier to avoid it, numb it, shove it away, and instead kind of inflate the self-esteem so that you don't actually have to touch the pain. But because of that, there are relationship issues. When people have felt um, hurt or belittled or um, like they can't trust you, and other ways in which relationships are kind of just torn apart because of the narcissistic behavior. There's a lot of isolation as you lose relationships. Perhaps there's been a divorce or family members estranging themselves from you. There's a lot of loneliness. There might be career issues because the career hasn't been very successful because there's a lot of, um, none of you understand my circumstance. There's a lot of blame put on other people. So then there's not a lot of accountability for when you make a mistake or something doesn't go right and employers read on that and you know end up firing you. There also might be a damaged reputation either personally or professionally because you have burned so many bridges with that failure to take accountability and really own uh, why things might be happening the way that they're happening. 
a lot of these negative consequences then not only affect those around you, but they affect you in a way that might lead to depression, anxiety, and substance abuse. Okay, so how do you change? How do you rise up from this? The number one thing that's important is self-awareness, freedom. It's why I'm so passionate about talking about this subject because if any narcissist out there is able to say, whoa, I really identify with this and can have that one glimmer of truth and self-awareness and able to label their behaviors as narcissistic, then you are on the pathway to freedom. Then you are on the way to healing. And so if you or someone you know is struggling or you think might have narcissistic traits, please share this information with them. Help them build that awareness so that they can find happiness and freedom because that's the most important tool. So when you start to have that awareness and say, gosh, you know, I really think that I've been narcissistic. I, I think that I have you know created a lot of wreckage in my life so first is to try and rebuild and repair some of those relationships just day-to-day -day relationships too so listening to other people asking questions not making yourself the center of every conversation narcissists have a really good way of turning every story to about them not really engaging in a dialogue, but more so just talking about themselves and about their own experiences. So if you have the self-awareness of like, oh gosh, I think I'm kind of narcissistic, sit back and simply just listen. Be the receiver of information. Don't always make it about yourself. This builds trust and it builds connection and relationships and will really go a long way. People want to feel heard. People want to feel like they're actually having a conversation. And if you're someone who traditionally doesn't do that, well, that's gonna feel really good for either acquaintances or loved ones to be able to get that from you, that listening, that attentiveness. The other thing is to practice boundaries. When you're narcissistic, typically you're unaware of how often you overstep boundaries. Perhaps you're making assumptions of how much someone wants you around or how much someone um, may value your opinion or your perspective on things. And so practicing those boundaries of just thinking, okay, maybe I should ask before I stop over, or maybe they don't want this gift, and instead I can ask them if there's anything I can do for them instead of just having this grandiose type of presentation of whatever it is that I thought that they needed because I have a, such a good idea of what this person might, might want or need. So again, it kind of goes back to that listening, not making assumptions, really trying to practice the boundary of like, what does someone need, what do they want, versus me just assuming that they want me and things that I can offer to them. Um, the third thing is to be accountable. And this is hard because this dredges up a lot of hurt and pain from consequences from behaviors in the past. And it's also really hard to sit in our stuff and the stuff in which we might have hurt someone else. And so owning your mistakes, saying you're sorry, going back to all of the things that might have happened when you were acting really narcissistic and digging into them and saying, wow, I'm really sorry that happened. I'm so sad that I hurt you that way. Apologizing and again, really being authentic in that you understand the negative consequences of your behavior and you genuinely are sorry for them. In addition, it's not over promising going forward. Again, this inflated self-esteem can cause then for you to overpromise and underdeliver, to not really be reliable, to not follow through on your commitments or follow up on statements that you've made. And so really having that awareness to say, okay, actually I, I don't have the capacity to do this, or I don't think I'm able to fully be there in the way this person needs me to be there. And rather than, you know, making it seem like I can and then under delivering and disappointing people and letting people down, I'm going to own the fact that no, I'm not perfect and I actually can't do this and I'm not superior to everything and everyone. And so being upfront, telling the truth, setting expectations with other people so that you aren't letting them down, which is probably something that's happened a lot in the past um, with that inflated self-confidence. Okay, fourth thing is to practice mindfulness. And what I mean by practicing mindfulness is starting to 
really understand why you're doing certain things. So before you're just acting, pausing, slowing down enough to say, okay, what is the intent behind this action? Am I looking for attention? Am I seeking validation? Or do I genuinely feel like I want to do this because it, it makes someone else's life better and it's not about me, right? The narcissist, everything they do is about them and what they receive versus truly being altruistic and simply thinking about the needs of other people and not having it then reflect back on them. And this is a really hard part to see because the narcissist will naturally say, oh, no, 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 like I'm such a good person. I help people and I'm so important to them. And of course, this is all about them. Of course, it's not about me. Uh, so being really mindful to say, okay, how did I get here? Why does this keep happening? How can I change into a truly more authentic giver instead of expecting a response? I can give a gift without needing someone to say thank you. I don't have to keep asking about how they liked it and do they love it and what do they think about it and how great it is, <laughs> right? Also, just being able to be the observer of your behavior. So mindfulness is that ability to step outside and look at things from a bird's eye perspective. How am I engaging in the world? How am I affecting other people? How are my actions impacting the world and those around me? And so not only is it the ability to be more empathetic, but then truly just be the observer and not be so in everything that we're doing. And you can practice mindfulness through journaling, reflection, um, and just simply slowing down enough in your day-to-day -to, -day to understand, oop, okay, well, how am I on autopilot? How am I going back to that familiar type of behavior? And how can I shift and respond or react in a different way? The fifth thing to do if you are a narcissist and need some help or someone else is to actually ask for help. And so once you have this self-awareness, it can be really, really, really overwhelming to then say, oh my gosh, I've hurt so many people. How do I do better? And that's when having a professional help you is really important because it's important to go through this journey with that objective, unbiased, loving, supportive someone who hasn't been adversely affected by your behavior, right? You go to loved ones that you've hurt and you say, okay, like I need help. I don't want to be a narcissist anymore. They will close the door in your face and be like, ha ha, once again, it's all about you. <laughs> so talk with a professional, someone who understands relationships and understands narcissism and is able to help you through it, again, through a non-judgmental, compassionate way. Because guaranteed, once you start becoming aware of your narcissism, you're gonna, already going to feel pretty, pretty bad about yourself. And so you don't need that from other people. In addition, this process of working with someone and helping, getting help through this is going to involve some self-forgiveness. And a lot of your loved ones aren't gonna be ready to forgive you for your behavior. And so if you can work with someone on first forgiving yourself while taking accountability, while changing, then that will help you feel a little bit less guilty and be able to let some of the negative things go as you start to heal and change and continue to own your stuff and apologize and be more empathetic and repair some of the damage that's been done. But what your loved ones don't wanna hear is, okay, I know I'm a narcissist, I'm, I'm gonna do better, and then you're not actually taking accountability. Being actively in therapy is that representation of I am practicing self-awareness, I am working on this, I am trying, I am doing better. Because a narcissist typically <laughs> doesn't want to change because it's really hard to sit again in that pain and trauma that what originated some of this behavior in the first place. And then the last tip, number seven, is this is ongoing work. Trauma that results in narcissistic behavior really is gonna need a good amount of love and forgiveness and compassion and healing in order to transform out of this inflated self-esteem into more of that self-compassion, more of that, okay, I get it, I have low self-esteem, a lot of things happened, I internalized a lot of things that hurt a lot of other people, and I need to sit in that, and that's hard. It's icky work, it's tough, and having someone support and doing it on a consistent basis and starting to shift your lifestyle in a different way is going to be really important. In addition to it will help you repair all those relationships because again, people will see you taking accountability. They will see you taking ownership. And that is so, so, so important as a narcissist to truly walk the walk.
because there's been a lot of over-promising and a lot of under-delivering throughout your life. Okay, I hope this is helpful for you. Next week, we will continue on our talk, our last week of narcissism. So if you have questions or if there's anything that I have talked about that you're like, ooh, I need more information on this, or can you please touch on this, please drop us a DM, let us know, and I will make sure to touch on it next week in our last week of Narcissism Month. Thank you so much.